Many analysts, including on this show, predicted that Hamas would inflict serious casualties against Israeli forces. Didn't happen. The IDF has dramatically overperformed, proven to be a serious force. And as for Hamas's vast network of tunnels, according to The Telegraph, the IDF is simply avoiding entering tunnels wherever possible, preferring instead to detonate or collapse them from above ground. Derek Anderson joins us now, a former Green Beret who trained with the IDF, along with Katie McFarland, former Trump Deputy National Security Advisor. Good to see you both. Derek, uh, your reaction to Israel's progress here, uh, how quickly they've been able to, uh, I guess, reduce Gaza to, to, to fleeing from Gaza City. Yeah, Robin, thanks for having me. You know, I think there was some criticism in the beginning of this. You know, we look back, it's been a little bit over a month. And there was a lot of criticism on the IDF and the Israelis to get in there fast, get in there fast, get in there fast and start moving. Uh, we can see now that the preparation that the IDF and the Israeli Special Operations Forces did in in uh, in preparing for this uh, attack from the north is paying off. Uh, and, you know, I worked with the Israeli SOF as well as the IDF, specifically with their, with their tunnel teams. This is not their first rodeo. They've done this before. They've been working through these tunnels uh, over the course of years. Um, in fact, for the longest time, Hamas was actually building the tunnels into Israel. Uh, the IDF and the Israeli government decided they were going to start building concrete underneath the fences that circled Gaza. So, again, I I'm not surprised yeah. that the IDF are having such great success. Uh, they've got the training and they've right. got the know-how. KT, uh, John Kirby says the White House position is that Israel not occupy Gaza after the war is over. Take a listen. We do want to see a, a reoccupation of Gaza. What we do support is some sort of governance in Gaza long term that includes the voices and the votes uh, and the self-determination of the Palestinian people. It's just it's so naive to the reality that we're all in. They, they again, live on their rainbows with the leprechauns. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Go ahead. You know, look, the Israelis don't want to occupy Gaza. They want to eliminate Hamas. They want to completely destroy Hamas. And then they want to figure out some way to prevent the other, whatever is left of the radical movements in either the east or the west or the north of Israel from coming back and attacking Israel. But, you know, the Israelis, they don't want to run Gaza. Nobody wants to run Gaza. They just want to destroy Hamas. And then somebody's got to figure out a solution, probably a solution that's, that's done in the region. In other words, the other Arab countries stepping forth to do some kind of management of the post-Gaza, post-Hamas Gaza. But the thing that worries me is, you know, the, the Israelis have been terrific. But the problem is going to be the political problem. It's not the military problem. It's not the economic problem. It's the political problem. How long is it going to be before the United States steps back from Israel? You just heard John Kirby with that sort of mush about the you know, the, the situation we're going to have after Hamas is destroyed. But once the United States steps back from Israel, and it, especially if it happens before Israel finishes the job, then it becomes a much bigger, more regional problem. Because if anybody senses that the United States is not backing Israel, not letting Israel finish the job, then everybody's going to come after Israel. They're going to smell blood in the water. The other thing that might happen is that if the United States does look like it's abandoning or walking back from Israel, what's Israel going to do? Is Israel going to say, OK, maybe we should just obey the United States? Maybe we should just go back to the old policy? Or are we going to go it alone? Are we just going to say, look, never again, and we now need to take steps, perhaps even steps against Iran's nuclear program? It's interesting. I mean, I understand your point that they don't want to run Gaza, but they certainly don't want to let I think Gaza rule itself with the with the track record that they've had. I mean, who knows what they're going to concoct this time with Iran's assistance? I mean, what 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 would that faction look like uh, that would come up in the absence of Hamas? I mean, it could get even worse. It could get even more dangerous. Derek, the IDF discovering inside uh, the Rantisi Hospital inside Gaza, Hamas stashed weapons uh, operating in the basement. You can see children's paintings on the wall. Uh, take a listen to this. It's a body vest for terrorists to explode on forces. Among hospitals, among patients, we have hand grenades, Kalachnikovs, and then we have the RPGs, people shooting RPGs from hospitals. You know, it, there, there's a lot of people, Derek, that continue to deny the, the, the fundamental reality 
of what's been happening inside of Gaza for, for these years that they've been attacking Israel and the constant barrage that has been sent. There's a lot of people in this country that don't believe that, that think this has all been manufactured. I mean, you see it right there. You see what they've put together. I mean, they are hiding underneath their most vulnerable people. Yeah, Rob, you know, when I was training with the IDF uh, probably about six or seven years ago, I distinctly remember I went down to the southern portion of Israel when we were looking into Gaza uh, and they brought out a map and they showed me uh, different locations where tunnels were beginning, uh, tunnels were ending. And I, I didn't really understand it until they actually gave me the perspective of those tunnels and those buildings were UN buildings, or at least they had the painted UN symbol on the side. They were hospitals, they were schools, they were things like that. This is something Hamas has been doing. And we've seen recently, there's been some interesting ISR footage, um, essentially, you know, the drones overhead footage showing the hospital, specifically showing that there's been RPG fire and small arms fire coming from these hospitals. Right. And then at the, at the same time, what we're seeing is civilians fleeing the hospital, um, Hamas terrorists integrating themselves within there, and then going to a new building and shooting RPGs and small arms fire from the new building. Yeah. I mean, this is their tactic, Rob. They, they hide behind uh, civilians as a human shield. And I mean, if you look at that picture you had just put up, Rob, yeah. you see RPGs, suicide vests, weapons, and and a tree in the background that a yeah. child had drawn. K KT, are, how concerned are you that, you know, that as time goes on, you know, about the loss of, you know, I, I guess Western support for Israel as this continues? I mean, does, does it feel to you like it seems like they're pretty close to achieving what they want to achieve in Gaza, but uh, it seems like every day <laughs> it, it, they lose a little yeah. more support? You know, I, it's very hard as a, as a decent human being to wrap your head around the idea that Hamas wants its citizens to die. It yes. wants to see giant casualties. It wants to see bloody women and children because that's the only way they can survive. That's how they defeat Israel in the court of public opinion. So it's not just that they're hiding behind. They are pushing forward their own people to be slaughtered. And that's an important concept to remember because it's really hard to, to wrap yeah. your head around that. And once you right. understand what you're doing, they've got to be eliminated. They've got to be destroyed. They've got to, there should not be one Hamas fighter left in Israel, in Gaza, in anywhere. It should not be left on the planet. And that's the only way to possibly have peace in the Middle East at some point. Well said. KT, Derek, thank you both so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll bring in Wisconsin.